is the next logical step for significantly extending life. I think cryonics is going to one day possibly provide that ultimate dream come true. It will radically transform society. The way we think about life and death today will be obsolete. I think we're going to have to develop a whole new paradigm on what uh, life is, what death is, and what constitutes an acceptable lifespan. Or even if there is such a thing as an acceptable lifespan, or is an unlimited lifespan going to become the norm? Optimally, cryonics captures biological life at the moment medical science pronounces death, but before the biological functions begin to deteriorate. Death is not an event. It is a process. And at the moment of legal pronouncement, you are still very much biologically alive. And if we can uh, access your body at the time of pronouncement, and put you into biostasis immediately, then we have essentially stopped your biological clock and we're able to preserve you in that biologically viable state for an indefinite period of time. At which point, at some point in time in the future, uh, it may be possible to uh, revive you from biostasis and cure whatever um, it was, disease, uh, uh, physical uh, trauma that caused your death and restore you to good health. This is the world's leader in cryonics and cryonics research and technology, the Alcor Life Extension Foundation in Scottsdale, Arizona. Alcor was founded in 1972 in Fulton, California for the purposes of cryonic suspension. Uh, after a number of years, uh, we relocated our facility from Fulton to Riverside, California. And after about 10 years in that location, because we outgrew it and because of the uh, concern that we had uh, with earthquakes, uh, we decided to relocate to Scottsdale, Arizona. From its quiet beginnings in the 70s, today Alcor has over 700 members around the globe including world-renowned scientists, physicians, scholars, and business leaders. In this state-of-the-art operating room in Scottsdale, Arizona, the intricate work of cryonics is routinely performed. The science of cryonics is a series of meticulous and exacting procedures to ensure that the patient has the best possible chance to be revitalized in the future. There are three basic steps. First, the stabilization. Next, the introduction of cryoprotectants. And the third step is the final cool down to sub-zero temperatures. Under ideal circumstances, it starts within an instant of a physician pronouncing legal death. We deploy a team of specially trained technicians, uh, some paramedics, some EMTs, some cryonicists, and they take a kit that has stabilization equipment, quite extensive stabilization equipment. Uh, this equipment includes a series of medications that are injected after pronouncement. In the first part of the procedure when the person just after their heart is stopped, um, the, the main problem is trying to get them cold as fast as possible and uh, the idea is to remove as much of the temperature, as much of the heat as you can and cool them as rapidly as possible because the damage that happens is a function of temperature. So. Uh, if you go all the way down to the temperature of ice, the damage is happening only at 1 18th as fast as at normal body temperature. And at that point, we perform a blood washout. We wash out their blood and replace it with an organ preservation solution. Specially developed solutions called cryoprotectants are carefully infused. Now, cryoprotection is the step of the procedure that is probably the most critical. It is the one that prepares the tissues for the lower temperatures and reduces the damage that occurs when you freeze tissue. Right now, taking tissue down to, to minus 196 degrees Celsius causes all tissue to freeze. There is damage. And the purpose of the cryoprotection is to reduce the damage to a minimal form. The final and longest step is a carefully controlled and monitored cool down. 
we cool the patient under controlled circumstances at the rate of one degree Celsius per hour all the way down to liquid nitrogen. And during this time, there's, there's no observation that can be done directly of the individual because the temperature changes. They're very sensitive to temperature changes. So we do have computer monitoring of the whole system as well as control of the cooling curve itself. So once they're cooled and they're minus 196, uh, it's a simple matter of transferring them to a long-term storage stewer, a container, very similar to a giant thermos bottle. Uh, basically, it requires no electricity, uh, no support of any kind aside from the occasional topping up with liquid nitrogen. And once there, we've got time. We've got time because a person can be maintained at that temperature with virtually no degradation of the tissue indefinitely. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, nearly 70 patients are carefully maintained in the Alcor patient care bay, waiting for science and technology to find the solutions that will restore them to good health. The science and technology of extending life tomorrow is happening today. Our scientific goals are to achieve re reversible suspended animation, uh, to be able to, to place our patients into biostasis without cellular disruption, and to be able to bring our patients down to a temperature that is sufficient to preserve them for an extended period of time without causing damage to them through the cryopreservation process itself. In Southern California, 21st century medicine is breaking new ground in the world of cryobiology. At 21st century medicine, we do research on low temperature preservation of tissues and organs for medical applications, especially transplantation and pharmaceutical research. We currently have federally funded projects for preservation of kidneys, hearts, corneas, and also do research on preservation of tissue slices for pharmaceutical research. Here, their work focuses on the full circle of preserving organs in deep coal and then recovering them with minimal damage. When we prepare an organ for cryopreservation, we begin by perfusing it with a solution that closely resembles the liquid part of blood. And then we begin slowly increasing the concentration of cryoprotectants over a period of a couple of hours. And then at that time, the, the organ is ready for deep cooling. We then cool the organ as rapidly as we can, uh, and we cool to a temperature of approximately minus 130 degrees C, ideally. And then we can store for as long as we want at that temperature. Uh, we would then um, carefully rewarm it and uh, connect it back up to an organ perfusion machine that then, in a careful, gradual process, uh, unloads the cryoprotectants over a period of several hours, at which point it will be ready to be transplanted. The implications of this work are far-reaching. Each year, more than 16,000 people die because they need an organ transplant, and there is none available. My goal is to have us be very successful at preserving organs by conventional methods and by cryopreservation. And I believe that the outcome of this will be that tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of patients will benefit and may even survive as a result of the efforts that we're doing here at, in this company. Well, right now, as everyone knows, we're faced in the United States with a uh, rapidly aging population that is going to have tremendous medical needs in coming decades. And a lot of those needs can be addressed by transplantation 